620. Going to, uh, this should be the, the final video that I post on logistic regression and just want to complete the summary of the results. Uh, I think we, in the previous video, we stopped uh, right at table six and I've demonstrated everything from the uh, presentation of the problem all the way down to the uh, the uh, the logistic regression uh, results. The final thing that I uh, uh, report in logistic regression is called the receiver operating characteristic curve. And I think of this as an effect size because the ROC leads to something called the area under the curve, which uh, behaves and reports uh, exactly like what we've seen with uh, uh, effect size. So uh, first of all, uh, this is the research, rec <laughs> easy for you to say, this is the receiving operating characteristics graph. So I want to show you how to uh, create that in R. Uh, first thing we have to do is we have to uh, install the package PROC. P is uh, ROC or capitalized, just as I've uh, typed it out there. If you haven't uh, installed the package yet, uh, clearly you have to install it before you can access the library. Um, it, it really, uh, this, uh, this package makes it very easy to create the receiving operating uh, char characteristic graph. Uh, we just use the ROC command. Uh, we put in our dependent variable, uh, which in this case is false, dichotomously coded, either fell or did not fall. Uh, next thing we do is we uh, calculate our predicted probabilities, and we use the fitted command uh, for our model. And the next thing uh, we do is we do plot equal true because we want not only our values to be calculated, but we want to plot them. Now. When I plot this, uh, uh, a little, I don't know, a little, it's a little frustrating at first because we notice that uh, the x-axis is reversed. And I don't know about you, but that would drive me absolutely insane. So instead of plotting specificity in a decreasing order, if we'll plot one minus specificity, uh, I think we get a much cleaner graph. So what I would want to do is add to this command uh, uh, legacy dot axes equal true. Let me close this one down. And you'll see that we get one minus specificity on the x axis and um, we get our uh, x values ordered from smallest to largest as that uh, I think is reasonable. Now, uh, so to copy and paste that in your document, just go to uh, edit, go copy, Go to where you want in your document and just paste it. So easy to do. Now, if we'll type just ROC uh, for this, I've stored uh, as uh, ROC. So if I just type that, uh, I get some <clears throat> interesting stuff. Uh, talks about uh, uh, cases that are uh, accurately uh, classified. But the most important thing we get from this output is the area under the curve. Now, uh, which I have reported over here, 0.596, and I uh, followed up with um, uh, reporting this as a poor accuracy. This this model uh, is, is not that impressive. Uh, and uh, I guess the final the nail in the coffin, if you will, is the area under the curve. What you can do, you can think of this as an effect size, and it can be reported as an effect size. Uh, I typically think of an uh, uh, area under the curve equal 0 0.50. We can predict false status uh, as easily, or as, I should say as accurately, uh, by flipping a coin. Our model is just completely ineffective. Uh, anything from uh, you know a little bit above 0.5 up to about 0.7, I, I classify that as poor accuracy. From 0.7 to 0.8, I would do, uh, classify that as uh, average accuracy. From 0.8 to 0.9, uh, I would call that uh, 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 actually very good accuracy. And from 0.9 uh, up to 1, uh, I would call that exceptional model accuracy. So again, you can see that it behaves and is reported just like uh, an effect size, right? Uh, so. Uh, I will tell you, I was going to really dive into 
explaining ROC curves a lot more, but there's a, um, uh, and I cur encourage you to, to, to take a look at this. There's um, um, a YouTube channel called Data School. Let me, uh, let me type that out. And uh, they have done uh, an excellent job uh, with a video that uh, dives into um, uh, AUCs and uh, ROCs. I think it's uh, I think the title of their video is ROC Curves and AUC Explained. So it'd be very easy. It's the best one I've seen, uh, and uh, I don't want to put one uh, post a video on it because it, it, it would uh, we we don't need it. Uh, they do such a good job that I encourage you to. Um, to to uh, watch it. In fact, I'll include a link to that video uh, in Blackboard. But just uh, just uh, on the surface, uh, let's let's take a look at uh, at uh, these data points. If you remember from the previous video, I could uh, create a table of um, uh, the from which I can get my percentage of accurately classified cases. So if I take my uh, predicted probabilities for my model. And uh, I think we just wanted, first of all, look at the ones that were uh, above 0.5. And then I want this uh, to be my false. Yeah. Um, ba -ba -ba. Okay. Um, oh, I got sloppy there. Hmm, well, table, fitted, model, greater than 0.5. I did uh, call falls, right? Yeah. All right, so I have no idea what was going on. Oh, okay, I see it's a parentheses issue. So I can quickly from here get my percentage of accurately classified cases. Notice that the 126 stands for the subjects, uh, the patients who fail, who were predicted to fall. So that is an accurately classified case. Notice the 24 represents the uh, patients who, uh, hold on. The 126 represents the patients who did not fall and were reported not to fall. The 24 are patients who fell or at least reported a fall and they were predicted to fall. So my percentage of accurately classified cases would be 126 plus 124 over the total sample size, which is 244. So my percentage of accurately classified cases uh, is 0.614. My error rate would be the sum of the other two boxes. These are errors, so 16 plus 78 would uh, be what, uh, uh, 94. So 94 over 224 would be about 0.39. So the error rate would be uh, about uh, 0.39. Also, it's just one minus PAC. Now, if we get our uh, table in this form, we saw in the previous video that the uh, sensitivity can be easily calculated by taking, just focusing on the patients who reported a fall and what percentage of those patients were predicted to fall. So 24 divided by 24 plus 78. So my sensitivity is going to be 0.235, which, uh, I should have reported, I did report uh, somewhere up here, or was it? Yeah, right there. Uh, specificity. Uh, it's just the percentage of uh, patients who did not fall. So our focus is on the percentage of patients uh, who did not fall and what percent, I'm sorry, we're focusing on the patients who did not report a fall, and what percentage of those patients were uh, predicted not to fall? That's a mouthful. So we have 126 out of uh, 120, well, 142. So 
So our specificity is pretty high, uh, about 0.89, and we I would uh, report that. Now let's uh, let's take a look at uh, at, at the receiver. Um, uh, uh, operating characteristics graph. Sorry, I'm getting uh, uh, distracted here. Now on the uh, on the x-axis we have one minus specificity. So let's just go one minus specificity, and we can see that we have 0.112. So if I go to 0.112, which will be about right here, the function value would be about uh, just a little bit above 0.2, right? Well, it would be our sensitivity, as we can see is uh, plotted there. Again, uh, I'm not gonna go mu into this much more because Data School does such a good job of uh, reporting this. Uh, I'll let you take a look at their work. I, it really is exceptional. It's one of the best um, uh, videos that I have seen on this topic. All right, gang. That's uh, that's all I have. Uh, this should um, this this should wrap up. Um, uh, I may, if I do report uh, post another video, it would be on uh, backward elimination, uh, seeking uh, uh, best model. It's a pretty neat process. What it uh, uh, it's a stepwise procedure, and what it does is we just throw kind of a lot of uh, predictors in our model. And then we have R sort through it and uh, keep deleting predictors uh, until we reach our optimal model, uh, the best model, if you will. So I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to cover that, um, but uh, if I do, that'll be the next video. If I don't, then this is it for logistic regression. Take care.